Hello everybody, welcome back. Tony Stark is one of the most popular and favorite characters in the MCU. This genius billionaire playboy and philanthropist proved that it's possible to become a superhero even if you don't have any superpowers. Due to his genius level intellect and deep engineering knowledge, he created his Iron Man suit. And while Stark was improving his armor in an effort to make it perfect, the ways he was suiting up were also changing. So let's recollect these awesome scenes. Jarvis, drop my needle. The Mark I was the first armor crafted by Tony Stark while he was imprisoned in a cave by a terrorist group called the Ten Rings. And we all remember how Stark and his friend Yinsen were trying to charge the suit. Unfortunately, Dr. Yinsen had to sacrifice himself to gain the time necessary for the armor to reach full power level. The Mark I was totally bulletproof and looked like a walking tank armed with several missiles and flamethrowers. My turn. This is not just a thrilling suit-up scene, but also Stark's life-changing moment that encouraged him to become an Iron Man. Also, it showed Tony's genius and impressive inventiveness. After the escape and returning to the Malibu mansion, Tony Stark constructed the Mark II. Unlike the previous suit, this one was provided with better technologies, had sleek design and fully integrated AI named Jarvis. As we can see, it was much easier to put on this armor because Stark was assisted by his robots, Dummy and U+. Due to wonderful background music and impressive CGI effects, this suit-up scene and the following test flight scene are just amazing. And it's like a dream. After it, Stark developed his third Iron Man suit that was equipped with different weapons and featured a red and gold color scheme. Throw a little hot rod red in there. Yes, that should help you keep a low profile. When Tony discovered that the Ten Rings had taken control of Galmira, he was full of anger, hate, and a desire for revenge. That's why Stark decided to test his Iron Man suit and kill the terrorists. The first Mark III suit-up scene is full of details that show how Tony was fitted with all the pieces of the armor. Everything was very realistic, including the high-pitched whirl of the automated screws or the clicking of the metal plates. Also, do you remember the funny moment when Stark was getting out of the armor? Obviously, that process needed further improvements. Let's face it, this is not the worst thing you've caught me doing. Tony used the Mark IV for the first time when he jumped out of the plane to land on the stage at the Stark Expo opening. We can see that this armor was much easier to take off, but still, it was impossible to do that without Stark's robots. Plus, thanks to the wonderful ACDC song Shoot to Thrill and amazing performance, this scene will be remembered for a long time. The next scene where Tony Stark had to put on his suit became one of the most satisfying and fan favorite. This also applies to the armor he was wearing. The Mark V was the first Iron Man suit provided with a special portable system that was able to fold itself into a suitcase. Thanks to it, Stark managed to deploy his armor within several seconds. It saved his life and helped to stop Ivan Vanko. When Stark managed to improve his arc reactor, he created new armor named the Mark VI. And it was the first suit with a triangular shaped unibeam on the chest piece. Besides, it had such amazing features as water and electric resistance. At the same time, Tony needed robots to take off this armor, but due to various modifications, he was able to do it even while he was moving. We saw the Mark VII for the first time just right when Loki had thrown Tony through the window in the Stark Tower during the Battle of New York. This was the first armor provided with the remote capabilities. As soon as Stark ordered Jarvis to deploy the Mark VII, it jetpacked out the window and thanks to special bracelets, formed around his body moments before Tony hit the ground. After the battle for New York, Stark created the Mark 42. The armor was able to separate into small armor plates and fly to Tony when he used remote command through the subcutaneous chips. Stark tested the Mark 42 in his workshop. However, it's difficult to say that his first attempt was completely successful. One of the armor pieces failed to assemble onto Stark and crashed into another suit. Also, when the pieces flew to him, Tony was pushed back from the humming blows, and obviously, the last piece of armor hit him rather painfully. I'm the best. Additionally, Stark used his suit to protect Pepper during the attack on his Malibu mansion. When Tony ensured his girlfriend was safe, he summoned the armor back and put it on to defeat the enemies. 
Besides, the Mark 42 helps Stark to escape from Trevor Slattery's house and deal with guards. One by one, the small suit components were flying to Tony. Although they didn't arrive all simultaneously, it's better late than never. Not to face. Whew, it's good to be back. If you're a true MCU fan, you'll never forget the final battle in Iron Man 3 when Tony Stark summoned his Iron Legion controlled remotely by Jarvis. During this battle scene, Stark was wearing a lot of suits, including the Mark 33, or so-called Silver Centrion, the Mark 16, nicknamed Nightclub, the Mark 40, aka Shotgun, and the Mark 15, also known as Sneaky. Stark liked to plan for possible negative repercussions, and one of those was the uncontrollable Hulk rampage. That's why in Avengers Age of Ultron, he had to fight with the Green Avenger using the Mark 44, aka the Hulkbuster. The armor was kept in a mobile service module, Veronica, on Tony's satellite, and after the Iron Man's command, the Mark 44 was sent down into South Africa. The armor began attaching onto Stark's Mark 43 when it was in midair. Probably anyone will agree that this is one of the most epic suit-up scenes. No doubt we were all surprised when we saw a fully functional Iron Man gauntlet deploying from Tony's regular-sized wristwatch. This gauntlet was the part of the Mark 46. Stark stored the armor in his helicopter and was able to deploy it with a simple press of the button. This is undoubtedly one of the coolest and fastest suit-up scenes ever. And the next suit created by Stark was the Mark 47. Tony used it in Spider-Man Homecoming to push the two parts of the Staten Island Ferry together and save the passengers. After that, he easily took off his armor to have a talk with Peter and take away Parker's suit as a result of his recklessness. If you even cared, you'd actually be here. And now we go to Avengers Infinity War and the scene where Stark deployed his Mark 50 for the first time. I'm sorry, Earth is closed today. Tony used impressive nanotechnology to create this armor. All nanoparticles were stored in a new removable arc reactor. They were able to deploy all over Tony's body in a couple of seconds. In addition, he was able to use the nanoparticles to form shield or various weapons. Where'd that come from? It's nanotech, you like it? The Mark 85 became Stark's final armor and the pinnacle of his engineering skills. He was wearing it during his travel back in time to New York. There he used the suit when he jumped out of the Stark Tower, repeating the scene from the first Avengers movie. Thanks to the nanotechnology from the Mark 50, this armor quickly wrapped around Stark's body and helped him to maintain his cover. Also before Hulk used a nano gauntlet, Tony deployed the Mark 85 and even created an energy shield. Unfortunately, the suit didn't protect Stark when he snapped his fingers and defeated Thanos. Don't forget to comment on your favorite Iron Man suit up scene. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give us a like, comment, and subscribe. Oh, not bad.